Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Lift him up and say thank you, Jesus. Because yesterday we celebrated his birth. And because of his birth, hallelujah, we have new life. Somebody say amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Ah, the day after Christmas. What a time to gather in his name and to continue to worship him in spirit and in truth. So we thank you for those here at Pay Memorial African Methodist Episcopal Church who gather in his name to praise him on the Lord's day. The choir will now come and lead us in a selection and followed by our prayer and scripture reading by Reverend Kevin Smith. Come on and say rejoice. Oh, 
being the best you can be. Thank you, God, for being a strong God. Thank you, God, for being a lifter. Because, Lord, when we're down, you lift us up. Lord, when we need to fly, you give us wings. When we need to run, you give us the energy. Lord, when we need to speak, you give us the vocals. Father God, thank you for all that you do for your children. Thank you, God. Even us that don't deserve your love, you love us anyway. What God does that? What human will ever do that? Nobody, nobody but the name of Jesus the Christ. Thank you, God. Thank you for loving us unconditional. Even when we don't do and obey what you have us to do, you love us anyway. Thank you for being our heads of protection, Father God. Thank you. Thank you for this house that we serve in, Father God. Thank you for the people that come out even in person or listen through the ways, Father God. We say thank you. Protect us. Bless us. Guard us, Lord. And to the shepherd of this house, continue to undergird her, Father God. Lead her as you would have her lead. And may we follow as you would have us follow. May we bend down on our knees and humble ourselves, Father God. Because no matter how good we think we are, there's nothing greater than you. Anything that we are is because of you, Father God. Forgive us for where we have fallen short. Forgive us that it was word, thought, or deed, Father God. We have truly fallen short, willingly and unwillingly. We ask for your forgiveness, Father God. And even though we see cloudy days ahead of us, even though we see a virus that won't go away, but God, we don't know when it, when it will stop, but we got you, Father God. We have faith in you that no matter how long this pandemic lasts, God is not like you. You are forever. You are eternal. Thank you for being an eternal God. And we trust you, Lord. We have faith that we will see sunny days again. Lord, thank you. God bless your people. Thank you, God, for the gift you've given us. Life. Thank you. Lord, we ask these things. Say these things in your name. The precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And amen. Once again, praise the Lord. We will have our scripture reading now. It will be Matthew 2, 7 through 11. That's Matthew 2, 7 through 11. Zen Hurl called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went on their way and the star that they had seen in the east got them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That is the word of God for God's people.
Thank you for the life that you've given unto us because we know we did not wake ourselves up, but you kissed us good morning. And not only that, but you clothed us in a right mind to worship with you this day. And we thank you. And God, we thank you for the resources that you have blessed us with. Uh, we thank you for our house or vehicle or means to get around. God, we just thank you for food and our covered and clothes on our back. God, we thank you because we know everything came from you. We thank you. Now, God, help this church to be good stewards of what you bless us with. And we thank you again for the opportunity to give and to worship you through our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The choir will now render, lead us in a selection as we prepare our hearts for the preached word.
Jesus is absolutely beautiful because he indeed he is what? Great and mighty. And we come to worship this great and mighty king on the Lord's day. Come on and give God praise. Amen. possible on this day. Uh, there is a word from the Lord, and it's coming from Proverbs, the 22nd chapter, verses 17 to 21. That's Proverbs 22, verses 17 through 21, and I'm reading from the Message Bible, and it reads, Listen carefully to my wisdom. Take to heart what I can teach you. Your treasure is sweetness deep within. You'll give it bold expression in your speech. To make sure your foundation is trusting God, I'm laying it all out right now just for you. I'm giving you 30 sterling principles, tested guidelines to live by. Believe me, these are truths that work and will keep you accountable to those who sent you. To make sure your foundation is trusted in God, I'm laying it all out right now just for you. I'm giving you 30 sterling principles, tested guidelines to live by. Believe me, these are truths that work and will keep you accountable to those who sent you. And our message this morning is a matter of principle. A matter of principle a matter of principle. Make eye contact with someone on your right, if someone's in your home, and say a matter of principle. Look in the mirror and say a matter of principle. And I point to yourself and say a matter of principle. Eternal God, our Father, in the precious name of Jesus, on this Lord's day, we gather in your name. We can't thank you enough for walking with us, keeping us, guiding us, but most of all, loving us. That while we were yet sinners, you gave your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Thank you. We know that we are not living this moment because of us, but we're living this moment because of you. And to that we say thank you. Thank you for the joyous celebration on yesterday, and we look forward to the tomorrows you have in store for us as we continue to place our hands in your hands. Now, God, as we continue to sit at your feet on this day, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let the people of God say, Amen. As we continue to celebrate the Christmas season, we also begin our entry into the celebration of Kwanzaa, a reflection on principles to live by today and to pass on to future generations. We celebrate our heritage and remember the tried and true values taught to us as people who came to this country young, gifted, and black. Brother Ron Karinga, an African-American, created Kwanzaa in the late 60s and established a new tradition from December 26th to January 1st of a holiday celebrating reflection on the festivals of first fruits in Africa aligned with principles that matters. It is important to reflect not only on our present, but also our past, and to glean that which has helped us on our journey. On Black Wall Street, there was unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics at its heights. Communities prospered and neighborhoods thrived. Pockets of Black Wall Streets were seen throughout the country as we embraced our purpose, used our creativity, and held on to our faith. Yes, it's true, Others were jealous of our success in a country that meant to harm us. 
and destroy what we have worked so hard for, but they could not destroy our hope nor kill our dreams, as these have been given to us by God Almighty. Somebody say amen. amen. As a matter of principle, we did not and we will not lie down and take what others meant for evil. Because our God still reigns and he still rules. Somebody say amen. amen. As a matter of principle, it is our roots that have us standing tall in the midst of obstacles and holding on to the truth of his word. That if God is for us, who can be against us? We know how we are portrayed in the media or marginalized by the government, but we have principles to live by which we were taught to embrace by those who came before us. In our own history books, written by grandma's hands or papa's feet, they would never let us forget our name and that our name meant something. And our name stood for something like honor, integrity, truth, fairness, and honesty. They reminded us that our life did not just start with us. But there is a long line of ancestors who walked this walk before us and carried themselves with pride as a matter of principle because only our God defined us and only God's thoughts mattered. And so with each generation, we have seen and continue to see African Americans as CEOs, COOs, and CFOs of businesses and companies utilizing the principles taught to them to make it in a world that has fought so hard against us. It appears, however, uh, these were yesteryears. Gone are those days of us shining in the glory of success. Look at the violence in our communities. Look at how young people are allowing clothes to define their worth and social media to determine their value by people who know nothing about them. Look at the number of people of color who still have not been vaccinated due to fear or being frightened by a history of false medical treatments and dying by the dozens, eliminating priceless souls from being with us. What must be done? is a need to return to the principles that has helped us in the past and a faith that has brought us from afar. Somebody say amen. amen. It is so good to know that we do not have to guess our way through life. But there are those who have not only gone before us, but they have left some breadcrumbs to follow. Yeah. The wisest man known to live was Solomon, as God gave him the gift of wisdom. Yet the worst thing anyone can do is not apply the wisdom given to them. And that was also Solomon's story. Yeah. Which is the reason he pens these wise words for us to embrace. A sage speaking into the future of those who want to know how to live. Turn to somebody and say, do you want to know how to live? He said, listen carefully to my wisdom. Take heart what I can teach you. Your treasure is sweetness deep within. You'll give it bold expression in your speech. To make sure your foundation is trusting God, I'm laying it all out right now for you. I'm giving you 30 sterling principles, tested guidelines to live by. Believe me, these are truths that work and will keep you accountable to those who sent you. 30 sterling principles to live by that started in Proverbs 22 and flows into Proverbs 24 that have stood the test of time. And for one to pin such wisdom, one had to first experience of learning these lessons the hard way. So much say hard way. Like, don't walk on the poor just because they're poor. Yeah. And don't use your position to crush the weak because God will come to their defense yeah. and the life you took, he'll take from you and give it back to them. Or a principle, don't hang out with angry people. Don't keep company with hotheads 
Because bad temper is contagious. Don't get infected. Or don't gamble on the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> Paul in your house against a lucky chance. The time would come when you have to pay up and you'll be left with nothing but the shirt on your back. Yes, someone did learn something the hard way and is now passing on these principles that will help us along our way. Thank you, Jesus. So as a matter of principle, do right. Do right. Joe Manchin never got the memo that when one gives their word, they honor their word. When one gives their word, they keep their word. When one gives their word, they uphold their word. But instead, Joe Manchin went back from his word to vote for the president's plan to help America to build back better. Is it a power play? Is it ego tripping? Is it to sabotage his own party? Only God knows and God will expose. In the meantime, in the meantime, we pray that as a matter of principle, he will do right. Honor his word and commitment to the American people. Somebody say amen. The Constitution continues to fail to honor his words to his citizens. Spouses have been known not to honor their words to their mates. And as a matter of principle, we simply want to say, do right. Do what has been promised. For the Lord always hears what we say, even when we forget what we have said or the vows we have made. Jesus said, don't say anything we don't mean. Just say yes or say no, instead of making empty promises. Do right by the people who share the same airspace we share. Don't try to manipulate others, undermine people, or even belittle them. Remember that the Lord sees it all. And we can all give, we will all have to give an account of our actions in these earthly vessels. Do right in handling our affairs. No shortcuts, no cheating others or what belongs to them, no quid pro quo. For the Lord searches the hearts of those who love him and seek him. Do right and take only what belongs to us and remember it is the Lord who will provide. Do right and give to God what belongs to him. For the Lord loves a cheerful giver. As a matter of principle, guess what? Do right. <laughs> That's all we want to say is do right. Turn and tell somebody, do right. Do right. As a matter of principle, act right. Act right. It is coming up on one on the one year day when the Capitol was under attack by those who say they love God and this country. There are trials underway right now in this country where we're waiting for the verdict, once again, of those who say they took an oath to serve and protect. There are people walking around every day with their emotions on their sleeves, just waiting for someone to bump into them by accident so they can go off. And the Lord is watching to see if it is even possible for us, the people he shaped out of dirt, to act right. We really don't need a definition on acting right because it is built inside of us knowing the difference between right and wrong. Am I right? But, but anybody in here remember hearing, when we get in the store, we better act right. When we get to school, we better act right. <laughs> when we get to church, hello, we better act right. <laughs> Any witnesses in the house, I can hear those words ringing right now. Act right. Don't do something foolish that is going to embarrass us, hurt us, or harm us. As a matter of principle, the insurrectionists should have acted right and respected the capital and the flag that they pledge allegiance to. As a matter of principle, 
The police officers should have acted right and respected the people they pledged to serve and protect. As a matter of principle, we should give people the benefit of the doubt when they say, excuse me for bumping into us. Ah, they meant that. Excuse me, it was an accident. What does the Lord require of us? It's quite simple, says the Bible, the message Bible. Act right and do what is fair and just to our neighbors. Be compassionate and loyal in our love. And don't take ourselves too seriously, but take God seriously. In other words, do what is right, to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God. Somebody say, act right. As a matter of principle, live right. Live right. Point to yourself and say, live right. Solomon gave us 30 principles to live by. And unfortunately, Judas never read these principles. Instead, he sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. Judas' principles were greed, power, and recognition that he lived by. And yet Jesus, who knew this in advance, still allowed Judas in his inner circle. Jesus knew that no matter the walk and witness of others, he was going to be true to his walk and his witness to the world and show love and compassion even towards those who plotted against him. He was not going to let anyone take him away from his mission to love unconditionally and to live the life God had ordained for him on earth. God had told Joseph, the child your Mary is carrying is my child, so live with her as your wife. God had told the prophetess Anna that one day the Messiah will pass through this temple. So Anna was content to live in the temple with her God until the prophecy came true. God had told Simeon, a, a righteous and a devout man, that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah. And when Simeon finally laid his eyes on Jesus, he said, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. For I have seen your salvation which you have prepared for all the people. He is a light to reveal God to the nation and he is the glory of your people. Somebody say amen. God said at Jesus' baptism, this is my beloved son. The disciples believed in him and chose to live with him by following him. Wherever Jesus went, he told the people how to live with God and how to live for God. And when it came time for Jesus to die, when it came time for Jesus to die, he taught the people not only how to live right, but also how to die right. By hanging on the principles of God, that those who die in Christ, what? Shall live again. For he said he is the resurrection and the life. And where I go, Jesus said, I will be with you. Somebody say amen. As a matter of principle, we must live right. But there is more to the story of his glory. Our Ephesian tells us now is the time to be made new by every revelation that has been given unto us. Anthony, what? Transform. Somebody say transform. And to be transformed as we embrace the glorious Christ within uh, as our new life uh, and live in union with him. Um, for God, uh, somebody say for God, uh, for God has created us all over again uh, in his perfect righteousness. Uh, and we now uh, belong to him uh, in the realm uh, of true holiness. Somebody say amen. So as a matter of principle, therefore, in this grace. As a matter of principle, God has given us what he wants us to have. His grace is sufficient for us. Let our lives reflect that he dwells inside of us and we in him. As we humble ourselves under the mighty, powerful hand of God. As a matter of principle, God wants us to do right. Somebody say amen. Because these are principles to live by. Not only to live by, but to die by. Somebody say amen. I'm not going to read the horoscopes. I don't need that kind of information. 
nation. I don't have to have my palms raised. The principles I need to live is already spelled out in the word of God. God will tell me to go right or to go left, to say yes or to say no. Whatever we need to live here on earth, God already has it in his words. So as a matter of principle, read his words.
worship of our faith, the one who said, I will lead you and guide you in the way that you should go. Walk in it. May his spirit rest root and abide with you this day and forevermore. Let the people of God sing. 